When we hear of Denmark, lovely pastries and the tragedy of Hamlet spring to mind. The tormented soul of his father speaking to him from the battlements of his castle, perhaps. However, it may not be King Hamlet himself, but there are plenty of other spirits in Drausholm Castle. The majestic building now hosts a luxury hotel and a Michelin star restaurant, but Drausholm is one of Denmark's oldest castles. Built on the island of Zealand in the 12th century, it has since been a fortified palace, then a medieval castle, and finally the present Baroque castle. It is rumored to host at least a hundred ghosts who dwell in its rooms, dungeons and winding corridors. Together, we shall meet seven of them. Number seven, the ghost of Burwe the Builder. It is said that Burwe the Builder was responsible for the construction of the castle in the late 1100s. Burwe was a monk with peculiar looks. He wore a eye prosthesis of stone. Because of this, he wasn't very good with straight lines and angles. As a matter of fact, the original south and east wings of the castle are not in a right angle, but completely askew. Burwe is one of the spirits that haunts the castle. During World War II, the castle was occupied by the German army. Soldiers had more to deal with than just the threat of enemy attacks. They recounted stories of a figure appearing in different parts of the building. He was recognized by some by his stone eye and the cowl he wore. Number six, the Mad Squire. The castle served as a residence and after the Protestant Reformation in the 1520s, it became a prison for noble and ecclesiastical prisoners for the following 128 years. Among the noblemen in prison there was Eilor Brokenhoesch. He used to be a confidant of the king until he lost his favor and was locked up. Towards the end of his time in jail, he is said to have lost his mind, which earned him the nickname the Mad Squire. Reports of a ghostly voice, that of a distant muttering combined with incomprehensible ramblings, have been reported by visitors to the castle. Are these the repeated torments of the Mad Squire? Number five. The Earl of Bothwell. The prisons were home also to a royal character. James Hepburn, the first Earl of Bothwell, was engaged with a Danish Norwegian woman, Anna Rustung. He eventually left her and went to Scotland, where he married Mary, Queen of Scots. He made the mistake of taking his former fiancee's rich dowry with him. When James was accused of killing Mary's second husband, Lord Darnley, he fled the country seeking refuge but a storm forced him to land in Norway, at the time ruled by Denmark. He was found without proper papers and was arrested. He was discovered by Anna Rustung's family and sued for abandonment and the return of Anna's dowry. King Frederick of Denmark heard that he was wanted for murder and decided to have the poor soul sent to Copenhagen, where he was sentenced to be imprisoned in Drausholm Castle. His time in prison was filled with sufferings and anguish. He was chained to a pillar, being given just enough food and water to keep him alive, until he slowly wasted away. Towards the end of his imprisonment, he is said to have gone insane. He died at age 44, after 10 years of confinement. The pillar he was chained to is here to this day and a circular grove in the floor around it can be seen where the tormented Earl would walk around and around for the duration of his imprisonment. His ghost is frequently seen wandering around the castle. He can also be spotted entering the fortress in a ghostly horse-drawn carriage. Some say the carriage is the one that took him to his final prison. Others say it is the carriage that took his coffin away. In a final twist, you can see him yourself, if you are brave enough. His mummified body is kept in the nearby Forreweiler church. Number 4. Ghostly Bishop As mentioned before, the castle was used both for political and religious prisoners after the Reformation. One of these prisoners was the last bishop of Roskilde. He was a very powerful and influential figure, and as such had to be gotten rid of. 
He was imprisoned in a cell in the tower in the castle center, where ecclesiastical prisoners were kept at the time. That area has been now converted into elegant hotel rooms with all comforts. It is said that if you spend the night, you may hear some strange moans or wailing sounds emanating from the hallways of the second floor. That is exactly where the bishop was incarcerated. Number three, the curious page of room 24. One says curiosity killed the cat. Many centuries ago, it is believed a young page had been too curious, peeping through the keyhole while something secret was taking place on the other side of the door. The page is said to have observed something he was not supposed to, and unfortunately for him, he was discovered. His peeping eye was ripped out of his head and chucked into the fireplace to be burned to ashes. The young boy was then tortured to death, and his tormented body was hidden away in a cupboard in the room. Guests to room 24 state that his presence can be felt, and report a feeling of being watched by an invisible eye. Would you be willing to sleep the night in that room? Number two, the Grey Lady. In the 1600s, a young servant called Louise Catherine Jens Deda worked at the castle. She had previously worked as a maid and was from a poor family. While working at Rauscholm, she stole from the castle silverware, but instead of dismissing her, the lady of the house forgave her and trained her in honesty, propriety and order. She made her matron of the castle and gave her responsibility for the silverware. Luisa Catrine marched around the castle, giving orders and directions to everybody, a task which she still carries out, it seems. She likes things to be done neatly and is said to be enraged by changes taking place in the building. A picture was once moved to the blue salon, but Luisa Catrine didn't appreciate the redecoration. To manifest her displeasure, she kept tearing the picture from the wall. The situation went on for years until a casket screw was used to mount the picture. That, it seems, made her stop. She often manifests as a draft of cold air. If you meet her in the corridors and hallways of Trausholm, remember to be kind to her. Don't show any fear. Just stand completely still and greet her politely. If you are ill-mannered, offend or scare her, she will become angry and upset. And believe me, you don't want that. Number one, the tormented white lady. Our scariest tale is probably the most tragic. Once upon a time, in 1540 or so, a beautiful and sweet young girl called Celestine Marianne de Beyon guldensierne cierne lived at Rauscholm. She was the squire's daughter and her father had picked a husband for her when she was just a child. However, in her teens, she fell in love with a young and poor boy who worked in the stables. The pair would meet in secrecy until one day, Celestina became pregnant. Her father discovered she was with child and told her she would be hidden away in the city of Schleswig to give birth to her bastard. A feast was organized for her farewell, a feast which Celestina attended in her beautiful white dress. However, she never made it to Schleswig. It is said that she was drugged and returned to Drauschon. No doubt tortured and humiliated, she was shoved into a narrow hole in the wall, barely high enough to stand upright. She was said to have wailed and pleaded as she was buried inside the wall brick by brick. Still alive, still wearing her beautiful white dress. Her screams and her scratchings from within the wall were heard throughout the castle until one day they fell silent. The story became a legend, one of those tales people tell each other around the campfire or in front of a fireplace on a dark, cold winter night. Until, in 1910, during some renovation works, a wall was knocked down and her skeleton was found, crouched within a small cavity. 
she was still wearing her elegant white dress. Celestina is said to manifest as a white lady. She can be occasionally seen wandering around the castle, looking for her forbidden lover, crying and moaning in sorrow because she hasn't been able to find him. If you meet her, you may be overcome by a great sense of sadness. She is said to be particularly attracted to sleeping men, and it's told that if guests don't behave properly, they often experience some sort of accident within the following day. Would you like to see the young lady? Well, Celestina's earthly remains are on display in a glass case at Rauscholm Castle. Why not subscribe to our YouTube channel for more spooky videos?